Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good morning, Art. Good How morning, John. You? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. You look nice and healthy. I, I feel I feel like I'm getting back to normal. You you haven't gotten COVID yet? Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, I don't. I, I don't. I haven't had my COVID test uh, ever, uh, but not yet. But the people around me who I have been in touch with uh, have actually several of them. Uh, well, uh, my son Mike works in uh, Hollywood uh, every other week, and uh, he gets a COVID test. And uh, he's been on airplanes, and he's had to get COVID tests coming and going. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went to. Uh, but, I was at the doctor's office last week, and. Uh, uh, outside the medical building, there's a tent, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a drive-by COVID test. And I said, "Well, can I get tested?" Oh no, no, you got a prescription from the doctor. I, you know, and it was like, I'm not important enough to get tested. Well, so you, I, the other thing is, I think you somebody's got to pay for it. So, you know, the so, testing. So you're not taking. You're not taking. Nice you're not going to take the test as long as you have to pay for it. I'm not. No. I was actually. I was, I, I went to a, a hardware store the other day at one of the Ace Hardwares. And about yeah. uh, eight eight shops down was a uh, uh, one of these urgent care kind of places, and right. they had tents in the parking lot, and they were giving COVID tests. Uh, and I will tell you that um, uh, the my, my son who's taking COVID tests, uh, while the uh, organizations that he works for uh, uh, eventually pay for some of it, but only if you use their Doctors, you know, they must have a, a, a thing, but what else is he, pay, he pays about $150 a piece for a, a 24 hour turnaround. And it's the nasal, the nasal uh, right. swab. Uh, yep. And I actually, because I picked him up at the airport, he had that done just to make sure that uh, we were wearing masks for the car and what have you. But he needed it because he had a job like the Wednesday and I picked him up on a, a Friday or Saturday. But he needed to have it done. I picked him up on Friday, but in any event, um, uh, and he was negative, but um, uh, really, I think what it is is they don't have enough of them. They don't have enough tests available that uh, uh, they're not just offering like water. Well, and then yeah, it's going to be a question of who's going to pay for it. Yeah, well, it, it, I mean, it is a question of who's going to pay for it, but it's also a question of priority right. uh, who who gets the test who doesn't get the test well if you don't have any symptoms right. wh why give you the test and that's that's basically what they were telling me go to your doctor if he gives you the prescription for the test we'll give sure. you the test you know? and I, so, I think we can all agree to that for the time being sure sure it until, makes sense until they, they, finally, they will finally come out with a uh, within six or eight months uh, one of these rapid tests that you can spit in a bottle or something and, and test it at right. home like the home pregnancy test and things like that. But until that's available, uh, it should be reserved for first responders and and uh, people who are actively working that need to, need to be in touch with other people. Sure, and, and high-risk people yeah. who have symptoms. Right. But certainly, yeah. certainly uh, I would love for uh, grocery store workers to be able to get tested once a week because they're out there all the time. Uh, they're in touch with the public, yeah. right? So, yeah, uh, the checkers particularly, yeah. Okay, but actually, so what happened with feeling normal and not normal, and what new normal is, and we can only talk about partial, is that the headline that I saw just in the last 24 hours, I think, was that Regal has shut down its theaters nationwide. Regal theaters, yes, you're yeah. right. I was, I was disappointed, but you can't blame them. Right. I mean, nobody's going. They got to pay salaries and they've got to pay rent and pay for the electricity, keep the theaters open. If there's nobody watching, going to pay for a movie, they've got to close down. Right. It's like all it's like the restaurants. It's like all the other businesses. They have to close down if you don't have the customers. Yeah, they they can't even get. They probably can't even get half full. I mean, the last place that you and I would think about going, and even with the differences in the way we approach things, is probably one of the last places. That you and I would think about going is something we always love to go to, which was a, a, a dark, enclosed <laughs> theater, uh, watching yeah. a film and having with a lot of people. With a lot of people, because we, enjoy, I know, uh, I think I speak for you as well. We just enjoyed that community activity sure. of seeing something on a larger than life screen and on a big screen yeah. and and hearing. By the way, this is why 
television shows have laugh tracks is because laughter is contagious. And so are the oohs and ahs and the shrieks of horror movies. You know, that's all contagious. So um, there is the, the, the experience, the common human experience in a large crowd like that, that is important to the enjoyment of a movie, let's yeah, say. Yeah, that, um, that audience reaction, even if it's an ah uh, or a everybody jumps at once or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and they don't make even, the, they charge uh, outrageous rates for popcorn and soda and things like that with <laughs> super high margins. And they can get away with it, which is fine. That's part of that experience. Uh, there aren't enough people to buy enough of that. So I suspect that part of it is that since they're not going to be full anyway, uh, they can save a lot on insurance and and uh, uh, medical and unemployment, right. all the other uh, liability insurance, as well as probably this is a great opportunity to, for them to say, and I think they had like 500 complexes, which might be you know 5,000 or 4,000 screens because of the most of the sure. multiplexes. Sure, multi-screen, yeah. Is that I suspect that what they're they're doing now is uh, renegotiating rents. And saying you want to lose it all together, you want to have a really yeah. big empty space, yeah. or you want to have some income. Uh, for Interesting. Time. You're, you're absolutely right. Interesting little history in the movie theater business and the exhibition arm of uh, theatrical movies. Around the turn of the century, remember the turn of the century, way back when. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you mean the you, turn you, of the century? You mean at 1999, 2000? That <laughs> turn. Okay, yeah, I remember that, that century. One. Yeah. The other one is a little um, older. A lot of movie theaters, there had been a boom, an economic boom. And movie theaters all started borrowing money and expanding and, and building multiplexes right. and, and building new theaters, building new theater complexes. And they, the, uh, what was it that around the turn of the century that hit? The bubble bu burst at... Um, uh, well, internet. It was the internet. It, 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 and, and the economy took a dive. And most theater companies, the theater owners, chains, um, went either bankrupt or into Chapter 11, I think it mm -hmm. is, where they reorganized. But the, what happened was one guy came along and bought up a ton of theaters on the cheap, bought them for a dime on the dollar. And that guy, whose name I can't remember, owns today a created Live Nation and a whole lot of other things, big um, mogul in the general entertainment industry, not just the theatrical uh, exhibition industry. And he owned Regal, uh, Edwards Theaters near us in Southern right. California, big chain in Southern California. Uh, he bought up uh, two or three chains. Oh, yeah, he, and, I, I forget the name. He owned Staples Centers, and he's out of like, Colorado. Yes. He did a lot of yeah. Chris, Christian broadcasting yeah. as well. So I find it interesting that here it is 20 years later, and now, due to COVID, you right. know, not uh, not anybody's personal uh, economic uh, crash, right. but just the the, the uh, general crash of the economy. He's closing theaters. They're going. Regal is just one of his many chains, and they're going to. I I can't see that they can survive in the theatrical world, and I should say in the world of media, uh, Hollywood. Uh, the producers are all worried about where do they where do they get their money from after you make a movie, whether it's a blockbuster or anything else. Can streaming media pay for it the same way that movie theaters used to? Think about what they used to be able to do. They'd make a movie, millions and millions of dollars. They'd put it into the theaters, get a lot of their money back, and then they'd put it into pay TV, and then they'd put it into DVDs, and then they they had three or four levels of ways to distribute their product to make money on it. And then, of course, there's worldwide versus the U.S. You know, it first it starts here, then it goes to um, Europe, then it goes to China, wherever it is. So all of that's changed. We have, a, we have a new normal that nobody's figured out for, well, probably for every business, right? Right. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking of grocery stores are a little bit different. Um, but restaurants are completely different. Movie theaters are on the forefront of crashing. 
and there may not be any movie theaters in 10 years. We don't well, know. Uh, well, nope. right now, so, so talking about some of those things, um, uh, on the movie theater front, you've also had the explosion of high quality, uh, uh, excellent transmission, hard screen TVs right. from, yes. from Netflix, Amazon, uh, yeah. uh, Disney, uh, so on and so forth. And most of them have subscription models, which gives them ongoing income. And even on the uh, uh, Disney, on some of the bigger ones, they the bigger releases, they're actually charging uh, closer to uh, fifteen or twenty dollars. But of course, for the fifteen or twenty dollars, it also only popcorn, and you may right. have you know a whole family in there of four, so it turns out to be five dollars a piece instead of fifteen dollars a piece. So a lot of the dynamics have changed, but it still costs a lot of money to make a quality yep. picture. Uh, oh, absolutely. Although, yeah. although the one of the things that have exploded, just as an aside, is that uh, my wife and I binge watched. Uh, uh, I think it's called Emily in Paris, one of the cutest episodic. It's on uh, yeah. Netflix, and I saw it. It's very cute. Yeah, and it. I'll, and in fact, I wanted to comment. I've been dying to tell somebody since I saw it. If you think about Emily in Paris, mm. it is the new Mary Tyler Moore show. Yeah. Yeah, no, really. Well, that's what it is. Mary the, Tyler Moore. They don't need the beret because they're in Paris. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. By, by the way, so if anybody hasn't seen that, uh, uh, Netflix and Emily yep. in Paris, it's just uh, it, it's like the new girl who was uh, uh, they had about three or four seasons. Uh, 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 sure. Sort of like the new Friends, except very the, cute. Yeah. yeah. Very cute stuff, so, nice but story. But the, the whole dynamics of that whole business is you yet to be written. First of all, they have the same problem with everybody else getting together and doing a shoot. So there's one yeah. episode, but are they going to have another year? Uh, right. And I think it'll be wildly successful. But getting back right. to the – so our new normal has been that things have changed. Well, yeah, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about our new normal. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking right. about – Restaurants and theaters and oh, of and, course, and, what, you know. what's important to us personally is more important to our audience, obviously, than than uh, um, the movies and things like that. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> movies are pretty important. <laughs> so, let's talk about our new normal. Okay, has your new normal changed at all since the beginning of the uh, COVID lockdown? It absolutely has. We're talking about eight months now, and right. uh, it's not so much a lockdown anymore as is a cautiously getting out there. And, and uh, for me, the new normal is that I do a lot of uh, uh, grocery, no more Instacart or any of those. Okay. I, so, wanna... so you're saying, you, you, you're telling me that you don't just order online and have it delivered anymore. I, I don't order it at all online. Uh, okay. I go out because there are so many for, for me. And for you, there are senior hours. I'm an early guy anyway. <laughs> so there are some stores that open from 6 to 7.30, like Ralph's locally. And it, which is seniors only. Seniors only. Uh, there's uh, 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 Walmart has uh, uh, food stores. Uh, and you can get in at 7 o'clock in the morning. And there's okay, another. So, so it's smart and final, the same thing. So I go to mostly senior hours. But the truth of the matter is, is that there are other stores that are so well maintained and right. everybody is wearing a mask and forgetting about whether or not uh, how you think the efficacy of, of masks are. Uh, but most people, at least you have the sense of confidence that you're not going to spread it to other people. It's not going to prevent you necessarily from getting it. But but if everybody's wearing that, that means that people in there are paying a little bit more attention. Right. Uh, uh, first of all, you don't want to. Well, uh, let me let me let me yeah, interrupt for a second, yeah. and, and put, let's put aside the masks and the, and the procedures for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the seven o'clock senior hour. What's the advantage? Because I've never bothered. What's the advantage to going at seven o'clock with other seniors? We're all in the senior group. We're yeah. all at the high risk. That doesn't mean they don't have COVID. They're empty. The store is empty. In other words, if you would normally go in, uh, let's say at 10 o'clock in the morning, and right. there were maybe 50 customers in there, it might be yeah. five or six customers. Oh, and it, pay, it pay, pays for the stores to be open, I figured, for a couple of reasons. Number one, most grocery stores stock o overnight. So they have their crews that are in there. The stores are open 24 hours, even if they're not available for the public. So 
So at, at just uh, Ralph's, I think locally here opens at uh, 6 a.m. Well, they wouldn't open at 6 a.m. just for us anymore, but right. they can make a big deal out of it. Even Costco uh, generally opens during the week an hour earlier. They've got the people there stocking the shelves and doing what they're doing anyway. So they just let the seniors in and there's virtually nobody there. It's almost impossible to bang a cart or run into somebody uh, in, the, in the same. Oh, OK. So that, that, that <clears throat> and now I understand mm -hmm. that makes it worth it to avoid the crowds because I'm avoiding crowds. Right. Uh, you know, big crowds, but not. Right. Well, you not shopping crowds. I go to, I'll go to the grocery store anytime I feel no, like but it. You do other things. Your new normal includes from time to time going to restaurants more often than I, which was only once. In I've a been year doing thing. that. I, the day they opened up the restaurants, right. or maybe the week. I'm not comfortable with that yet, but that's my new normal. But your new normal, and you've you've been very happy. You could talk about some really good Italian restaurants. Well, that's just because I'm I'm in a kind of an area where I have three good Italian restaurants to choose from. Right. Um, but we've been to the Chinese restaurant as well, and uh, the Mexican place. Um, we're doing less restaurants than we used to do, um, but. Uh, we rarely went to really high-end restaurants. I call, for instance, Ruth's Chris uh, yep. a high-end restaurant. Um, we would go to those three, four times a year. Most of the restaurants we go to are what I call the middle-level um, neighborhood restaurants that, with good food. And, and good by food, the way, nice service. Were Everybody they, knows were they outside tables or were they inside tables? Well, now they have outside tables. Now everybody's no, got but outside when you tables. Went, when, you, when you went to these restaurants... Mostly inside and mostly outside. Well, since since the again the COVID closed everything down, right? For six months there was no restaurants, and when they opened them up, they only opened, as I recall, the out. I might have the my schedule wrong. They opened up outside, so you could go outside and sit. Then they opened up limited inside, and then I think, if I'm not mistaken, they closed them down for a few weeks and opened them up again. And you know, it's stupid, crazy stuff from my point of view. Um, so the point is that I've been much more liberal, if you will, much more uh, progressive about going out and uh, not feeling quarantined, not, uh, you know, again, quarantine is a bad word to me. I, and I don't, I don't want to get into the politics of it, but um, you and I are different. We're not quite polar opposites in that you've been much more conservative about following the restrictions and um i have been much more liberal as soon as they opened up the <laughs> i'm not to that john I, i'm not to that john okay i know that's that, that, just you're a liberal and i'm the yeah. conservative <laughs> who would have thought it who, who, who would have who would have flunk it even yeah but let's talk about something where we do have uh, we share actually a a absolutely rock solid new normal that we share which is yeah. not going to meetings not going to, oh, that's to, true. To that's true. Yeah. And we, we used, used to, to go, we used to run them we used to have, all the time. We used to have monthly, yeah, professional, yeah. professional get togethers. And professional. You, and, you and I would, would uh, yeah. uh, we, we've gone to uh, finance meetings in, in Mission Viejo. We've gone yeah. to, uh, in San Diego, uh, we would we'd go maybe every three months to a, uh, yeah. uh, uh, a uh, industry meeting. And sure. Technical, whether they were technical, creative, right. they were they were uh, professional groups getting together, semi-educational, very social. Um, you know, meet your competitors, meet and make you meet with your friends, your coworkers, that kind of thing. So those are they. Those all went away with right. the COVID, the beginning of the but COVID if, since, if it were, since February. If, if, they if, haven't come back. But if they came back, I wouldn't go. I'm I not, would. You would. See, yeah, with with masks. Okay. I, well, I, you know, I've I've been actually finding that the alternatives of Zoom, yeah, uh, you know that I used to go, take uh, uh, Tai Chi classes. Well, now yeah. that I take I take them uh, through Zoom, and so I actually with, I take them. You stand in front of your camera and do this with uh, everybody else in Zoom. Uh, yeah, but actually, for most of the time, you keep the camera shut because it eats up the bandwidth. So, oh, okay. So that's the new rule. You just watch. You just watch the right. instructor. Uh, yeah. About the only thing that we do, uh, because we have younger grandkids than you in general. You have. Uh, oh, we we have. Oh, we have in the uh, late twenties, and we have uh, a yeah. five-year-old no, and eight-year-old. Yeah. But we we are spending time as uh, teacher aides, not so much any more because of, of a range of schedules, 
So that that provided uh, exposure to us, but the kids were only online, and uh, uh, Mom uh, Matsuka has been uh, home working from home, and Mike has had frequent COVID tests, so uh, we feel more comfortable. But you know that's that's probably a bigger risk than we would normally otherwise like to take, but. Uh, we feel fairly safe in that environment. So everybody's normal. Really what it is is different. And at this point, uh, we'd like because uh, of our, uh, I feel like that, uh, where was the thing where the kids switch places, the twins switch places uh, in the movie? Uh, and you're classic, the classic story, yeah. yeah. And so you're the liberal and I'm the conservative. Right. Okay, right. so if anybody's not chuckling because of that, then probably they could, should have a COVID test. Because sure. they've lost their, their sense of humor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, well, here's the, here's the one thing that we agree upon, even though... Well, we agree uh, on a lot. We agree on a lot. Sure, but we, we, we are um, politically polar opposites. We're opposite in a, to a great degree in the sense of how restrictive the, the government should be with everything. But we do agree that um, we should all be wearing masks. Yep. We should all be, you know, washing our hands more often than we ever did before, mm -hmm. and uh, and that we should be social distancing, um, you know, whatever possible. So those are just common sense precautions that, you know, they're not going to cure the damn virus, but they're important for us to do. And I think we can all agree on that. And I, the new normal is different for everybody, different for you than it is for me. I really don't feel... Um, other than the fact that the government has shut down restaurants to, you know, maximum of what, 25% inside, something like that. Other than that, I don't have any restrictions on my activities. Sure, the uh, the professional meetings, the group gatherings are, are not being held. They're on Zoom. And, so and, and, and when was the last time you booked a cruise ship? That's, <laughs> well, yeah, well, you and I. The next time cruising. will be the first time. We're not. You're right, but that, right. and that's an interesting point because we're not cruisers. I don't miss it. Right. Um, I don't have anywhere that I need to go to fly to, so I don't miss airplanes. And also for us, what's really great is we've met a lot of interesting people and then interviewed them online in a new normal of of television, which is yes. by online connections, right. Skype, Zoom, uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, so in, in a lot of ways, yeah. the new normal has. Uh, work to benefit of us. In fact, even with the pilot that we're doing, is that uh, television? We we were raising money to get an audience and a set, and this and that. <laughs> we don't have to do that anymore, which is why we're getting ready to to shoot the the pilot because we can do it with the electronic facilities that we have. But so at this point, because we've gone on and on as as our audience. They probably would like us to drone on for 45 minutes. I know that they tuned out after the first two minutes, right? This is about you and me. I, I think I think a lot of them just say they like us because they like us and they, they don't watch it at all. So they have. <laughs> but for the two of you who actually watched it to this point, we'd be interested in knowing what your new normal is and where yeah. you think. And I think we should talk about where we think the new normal is going with. Uh, well, we got Halloween coming up. What's that going to be like? And. And uh, New Year's and uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. So maybe in the next week or two, we'll talk about uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving, what we imagine the new normal will be like. Right. I, my, my guess, just to do a preview, is my guess is that Thanksgiving isn't going to change a whole lot because families have been getting together anyway. Right? Families have been getting together. They take off their masks. They know who's sick, who's not sick. Um, but Halloween is a social outdoor social go around the neighborhood kind of thing um ha, uh, new year's big parties you know so those those will be interesting to see how they change and i'm sure they're going to be different than years past anyway we're you know? we're interested in what you think and so please let us know <clears throat> you can send it to uh either wherever we post this in about seven different locations and you can respond there or just send us an information to either Art or John or info at celebratingact2.com. And uh, yep. that's, uh, yeah, info at celebratingact2.com. This way both of us will get it. And uh, then we'll, we'll incorporate that into uh, a, a future vlog over the next few weeks. But in any We'd event, love to 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. Great. So anyway, John, uh, this is our new normal. We, we well, we talk a couple times a week, but our new normal is that once a week we uh, infect the the internet with our thoughts, and I like that. <laughs> well, you are just hoping it will go viral. That's all. I will never wear a mask on our vlog. Oh, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. I'm so proud of you. No virtue. Virtue signaling. So me. I'm still a little, a little bit liberal. <laughs> I'm a little bit conservative. Right, Donnie and Marie, there we go. Anyway. All right, all right. I will talk to you very soon. And folks, thanks for watching. Um, please take a look at our, our uh, YouTube site, uh, Celebrating Act Two, and watch some of our great videos with some of our wonderful contributors. Lots of good information, lots of entertainment there. Some very inspiring stories, I might add, as well. So and, we hope you subscribe. And John is being very uh, humble and shy, as he normally is. Uh, but when you're at our YouTube uh, channel, which is Celebrating Act the Number Two, let's go to YouTube and search for that. When you get there, please subscribe uh, and help build our audience. Thanks again. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.